What is up guys, Fahan here, welcome back to another Ultimate Review. This is the review of the CF Moto 400 GT. Huge thanks to CF Moto Singapore for loaning me this bike for the review. So I know some of you guys have been requesting us to do a CF Moto review and finally thanks to CF Moto Singapore we are able to get our hands on the CF Moto 400 GT Tourer our first ever CF Moto review I'm really excited about this I tried it out and uh, first impressions wise it's looking good so far lah. so a bit of introduction about the CF Moto brand um, they're known all over the world for producing ATVs and for a long time they've been making motorcycles quietly but recently they decided to do a global expansion and CF Moto landed on Singapore shores sometime late last year we went for the launch and everything and we had a big party and I won some prizes this time round they have been designing motorcycles from the ground up and they've also collaborated with well-known brands and especially with their partnership with KTM also they themselves have produced bikes on behalf of KTM in China that really says something lah about the CF Moto brand in general a bit of introduction about this bike the GT400 is based on the earlier 400NK Street Fighter it's part of the GT series of sports tourers very much similar to its twin the 650GT with slight mechanical differences lah. so let's get on the bike because <laughs> of the side panels I really have to lift my legs up <laughs> so at the weight of 326kg it's kind of heavy for its class but the shorter right height really makes up for it lah. and I'm really flat footed on the ground guys on this bike but if you ask me I've got no problem with the weight of this bike given that I'm standing on the bike like this right now and also while I was pushing this bike at the immigration queue at Tuas because of the shorter right height it really makes up for the heavy weight lah. so no trouble with pushing it at all at the immigration queue in Tuas so the fuel tank is 19 litres a whopping 19 litres pretty huge for a class 2A bike similar for the 650GT I think is basically you know a 650 GT but with some mechanical differences different engine but overall I think they retain a lot of the features with the 400 lah and the projected consumption for the 400 GT is 30 kilometers per liter which is pretty good actually if you ask me pretty hot day today I've been drinking a lot of water the past few days the weather has been really hot to the point that even tires are starting to melt as they hit the tarmac which is <laughs> hopefully they don't happen here okay so starting this bike pretty straightforward uses a key yeah and you can see the 5 inch TFT display lighting up so starting the bike push down the ignition similar to the Yamaha Kill switch ignition button combined and note that you can only start the bike in neutral you cannot start the bike in any other gear so like if you're in the checkpoint and you suddenly stall right you need to go back to neutral and start the bike uh. so there's two riding modes this is sports mode and there's touring mode so the TFT display changes accordingly but if you ask me there's really not much difference in terms of performance uh. I feel that in sports mode the pull is slightly faster lah okay so I'm gonna go back to touring mode lah so first gear and we're off and one thing that I really like about the 400 GT is the sound the sound is a really nice deep throaty sound you're getting a parallel twin 400 cc engine handling wise I love it given its weight of 226 kg right it really helps with the maneuverability and the stability of the bike lah. so handling is pretty tip top I'm pretty surprised on how well the bike handles ah. you can feel the tires just gripping to the tarmac once again the sound whew, when you change gear especially yeah sounds pretty pitching eh? <laughs> it's a lean mean machine so the riding posture wise it does have a sporty riding posture I'm leaning forward quite a bit but at the same time it's not really that straining on my back it's pretty comfortable if you ask me performance wise upon launch it's a little sluggish but once you get up to speed the low to mid range is pretty good lah. and given that it's a sports tourer highway riding is definitely the best suited for the 400 GT lah. 
and I get a lot of looks especially here in Malaysia uh, when I'm riding this bike I mean the riders in Kachais when I'm parking this bike uh, people wondering what the heck is this and it's interesting to know that in Malaysia they brought in the 650 GT the 400 it's not being brought here but it wouldn't make sense to bring the 400 given the different licensing standards here in Malaysia lah. but I would reckon that given the both GT 650 and 400 they share a lot of the components right and they are even visually similar I reckon that it wouldn't be too far off from each other lah. maybe the performance wise may be slightly improved on the 650 GT lah. and speaking of 400 GT right this is probably the only class 2A sports tourer in the market I've never ever seen any model like it for class 2A the closest that I can think of probably is the CV 400X but it's more of an adventure bike lah. city riding I feel given it's rather obnoxious large size right it's a bit cumbersome but still manageable lah. it's not that bad actually if you ask me but it's much better suited for the highway like I mean if you ask me start stop traffic uh, slow traffic city riding basically no issues lah. overall it's still a good all-rounder <laughs> gets up to speed very quickly and because of its stability uh, you don't feel that you're going fast at all you feel as if you're going like eh, 50 60 sekali when you look at the speedo is already 80 <laughs> and the speedo because of the TFT display ah, is very prominent you can really see all the information that's being displayed on the 5 inch TFT so it's very clear under the bright hot sun like this brakes are pretty good ah. comes with dual channel ABS provided by Continental brakes are provided by I forget the manufacturer's name but it's a Spanish manufacturer that recently was bought over by Brembo so that really says something about CF Moto like despite its Chinese origins they've collaborated with uh, well-known brands in the motorcycle industry so it doesn't feel cheap you can see it from the build quality itself it's actually pretty good build quality if you ask me based on the 400 nk street fighter the cf moto 400 gt is a fully flat sports tourer launched in 2019 though identical in appearance and size to the 650 gt the 400 is mechanically different and presents a budget-friendly option for the needs of various riders and the licensing standards of different markets Engine is a 400cc liquid cool parallel twin cylinder 4 stroke UHC with electronic fuel injection and a 6 speed manual transmission. Right, guys, so as usual, gonna start off with the running posture and take note that the CF Moto 400 GT is designed with Asian statues in mind. Eh? So it's slightly smaller than what a sport tourer would typically be with a length of 210 cm with ride height of 79.5 cm and 165. And as you can see, and completely flat footed on the ground so easy when you want to straddle at the checkpoints eh, while waiting to get your passport to be chopped so for me no trouble at all despite its weight of 226 kg eh, the shorter right height really makes up for it eh. so let's come to the design of the GT400 eh, and the bike is designed by Kiska in which is the same company that designed most of KTM's bikes eh. the design itself is the same as the 650 GT and my personal opinion is modern and clean not too futuristic but at the same time it doesn't feel outdated and it doesn't look too aggressive the soft edges really give a rounded look and I really love the quad headlight design at the front overall outlook is very distinctive and unique different from the aggressive and the sharp angular lines that you know we are used to in the market nowadays uh. Uh, this really brings a whole new perspective on bike design okay so up next is the handlebar controls and the handlebar of course is a naked setup really easy for you to mount accessories on it like phone holder or even Insta360 in my case and for the riding controls and switches it looks simple uh, despite it being loaded with some of the riding tech lah. and also another thing that I like is that the symbols on the handlebar controls uh, they're actually backlit definitely on the Malaysian highways at night uh, where it's very dark you can make out all of the symbols on the handlebar controls uh. so to the left over here we got the high beam, low beam the mode button to toggle between touring and sport mode horn signal indicators and to right over here we got the starter and kill switch similar to what Yamaha has been doing 
and also hazard light. Uh. And up next, we come to the gauge cluster. Okay, so the gauge cluster is a 5 inch TFT display. It switches from day to night mode automatically, uh, even when you're in the bright lights and you suddenly go into the tunnel, it will automatically switch itself. Uh. Um, there's no way for you to switch it on your own end. Uh. And the changing of the riding modes will automatically change the arrangement of the gauges also. Uh. So downside to this, there isn't much customization to change the display itself. And because of that, it feels kind of gimmicky. Lah. So I wish they had customization or more riding modes in mind. So regardless of touring or sport mode, you get the tachometer, the speedometer, the temperature of the bike, the fuel gauge, the voltmeter, the clock, and also the odometer. Lah. So to toggle between the odometer and the trip meter, you just press the select button and there's only one trip meter for you to select. Lah. And the adjust button on the right side over here, it actually adjusts the brightness of the TFT display. Lah. And we've got a cluster of warning lights to the left and right surrounding the TFT display. And the sport mode, the time, the voltmeter, and the orbiter is made more prominent, I would say. And it's less prominent in touring mode. Okay, so up next, you come to the riding tech of the 400 GT. Right? So there's some riding tech on it, but nothing too advanced or heavy as it's intended to be a mid-range kind of bike. Lah. But despite its mid-ranginess <laughs> and rather affordable price tag, um, they've collaborated with well-known brands within the motorbike industry to provide the best riding tech that is for the 400 GT. Lah. Okay, so let me list them out. Lah. We got full LED lighting all around. Dual channel ABS is provided with Continental with three brake rotors, two in the front, one in the rear, paired with calipers by J. Juan. Suspension is provided by KYB, a Japanese uh, manufacturer. We got conventional telescopic forks in the front and a mono shock in the rear offset to the right side, giving a nice ADV look to the bike. Eh? And speaking of shocks, right, I really love that the rear mono shock is blue in color, really makes it stand out from the rest of the bike. Eh? And electronic fuel injection is provided by Bosch. Of course, the five inch TFT display, hazard lights, charging ports on the left and right of the flaring, okay. Got a pair of USBs on the left and a 12 volt socket on the right and manually adjustable windscreen. Eh? And as an added bonus, CF Moto, the dealer, they are providing uh, shard side panels with every 400 GT sold. So horn check for the GT400. <laughs> it's very high pitched and it's very, very loud. Right guys, so up next is the colors. So unfortunately from the factory, there's only two colors available for the 400 GT, which is uh, Nebula White, the one being reviewed right now and Athens Blue, which in my personal opinion looks pretty sweet. Lah. And up next, come to the price. So from the dealer themselves, CF Moto Singapore, they have informed me that the machine price is $13,000. With the side panniers. Huh? <laughs> and for warranty wise, they have covered three plus two. Okay, so what that means is that three years warranty is from the factory and another additional two years is covered by the dealer itself. Lah. Take note that the 400 GT is not being brought over to Malaysia due to its uh, different licensing system. And of course, if they were to sell it here in Malaysia, definitely it's not going to sell very well. So they've brought in the 650 uh, GT instead, which is uh, listed as 29,990 ringgit. So you all go and convert that yourself. Lah. <laughs> and now comparing this to the Honda CB400X, uh, especially in the Class 2A category, eh, uh, the machine price is listed at 18,120. So with the features, technologies and warranty, um, you're definitely getting your money's worth. Lah. Of course, you're gonna make a left here. <laughs> it's very common for Malaysia to beat red light, lah, but of course, we're not gonna do that. Who love that you can corner this and of course upon when you're cornering with this bike I feel as if I can go even lower but I'm not going to do that because I've got side panels on me which are free from the dealer by the way eh? shut side panels eh? so because CF Moto is like trying to penetrate into the market right they're giving away a lot of freebies and like longer warranties it's good for us consumers I mean we got a great deal on a machine. I mean, at 12K machine price, 
it's a pretty good deal if you ask me changing gear i have trouble changing gear um, especially wanting to change to neutral so the gear can feel a bit clunky otherwise it's kind of minor and doesn't bother me too much only i find it a bit irritating i've been skeptical about cf moto itself but from time to time again they have proven that the bikes are reliable the build quality is phenomenal and cf moto themselves they've been making a lot of effort despite its chinese origins you can really see the build quality and the phenomenal effort that they have done to penetrate you know, through the market lah. and providing affordable budget friendly but yet good quality machines you know and in singapore the 400 gt is cf moto's best selling model so once again class 2a riders there's really no other sport tourer in the class 2a category i mean if you mention like super 4 super 4 is more of a street bike a cb 400x is more of a sport tourer oh what the heck smoke is so thick so i don't think it comes with super clutch or right by wire but it certainly feels like there's right by wire on the bike the throttle response is pretty good if you want to improve on the gear right on the gear changing they could have put super clutch in there but i mean at 12k machine price and this is a bit of the compromise that you need to live with lah. but despite that the price point they still managed to fit in some riding tech in there okay we are in the highway now so this is where it's supposed to belong huh? so let's whack it <laughs> and thanks to the bike stability and high speeds it doesn't really shake and I feel pretty stable cuts through the wind pretty well the windshield is adjustable by the way eh? uh, it has a top speed of 175 but of course we're not gonna go to that highway riding is where this bike belongs eh? and interestingly I don't feel as if I'm going that fast I feel like it's normal no? suspension wise whew, it's pretty damn good with the KYB suspensions they've collaborated with a reputable Japanese brand for the suspension handling is really awesome man it's really a breeze when you want to take on that corner regardless slow or fast speeds the CF Moto you guys did a great job on this I, <laughs> I'm a loss for words honestly launch and the torque it's not really that fast uh, but it gets the job done it's still okay oh brakes are pretty good slowing down considerably for slow traffic right ahead and I was as I was going through the regulator right uh, I don't really feel much of the bumps and uh, road imperfections uh. it absorbs the impact pretty well uh, as you can see over here wow <laughs> it's really a nice comfortable ride guys oh handling is also pretty good I've always had trouble with this toll plaza the motorcycle lane uh. I've always been scared to like lean into the corners but this one because of its awesome handling I feel confident and comfortable taking in the corner and negotiating that dangerous bend it's so stable guys alright guys so I had like one week with the CF Moto 400 GT and overall I think CF Moto did play their cards right okay they provided a bike that is beautifully designed collaborated with well-known brands and in industry lots of riding tech on their machines and all of this packaged into an attractive price tag lah. for the class 2A segment there's probably none other like it I think this is the first ever class 2a sports tourer not really counting the cb 400x because that is more of an adventure tourer and i think it's good for class 2a riders who want a sports tourer as their main bike it's definitely something different on the roads overall i feel that as a sports tourer uh, it should come with a you know cruise control 
or at least a throttle lock so that at least on the highway your, it doesn't strain your right hand. My overall conclusion, I really enjoyed myself with the Ford GT and really gives me a good impression of the CF Moto brand itself like, and I may even consider a CF motorbike in future for myself lah. When Emelina's COE is expired, and the GT400 is um, overlooked because maybe that CF moto is still new in the market and it's quite obscure lah. But given that the high prices of motorcycles right now, riders may look at other alternative lah. And CF moto might just be there to fill in the spot. So once again, huge thanks to CF Moto Singapore for loaning me this bike for the ultimate review. You can check out this bike and other models at their showroom in Kampung Ubi. Test rides are also available if you're keen on trying out this bike and the whole range of models that they have. So that's it for the vlog and we'll see you guys in the next one.